for anyone who doesn't understand, or maybe who's someone who's just like raising their first fund, uh, becoming and thinking about going into VC and learning about the fundraising process, uh, but also those who are sort of just VC enthusiasts, they want to say, okay, how does like a Sequoia become a Sequoia? How do you actually raise money to become uh, a fully fledged fund that you can start to invest in early stage companies and, and so on and so forth. Do you want to quickly just break down uh, what that fundraising process, everything from like sourcing the LPs, um, getting connected to the right LPs, maintaining those LPs and those connections, you know, it'd be good to sort of take sort of a, a high level snapshot of the Medium article you wrote and sort of explain that uh, in this episode about how you would go about if you were just starting out for the first time and what really are those key, um, you know, insights that you need to gain in order to start thinking about fundraising the proper way. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good question. And we could spend this podcast and many others talking about the entire process. So I'll try to do the like TLD of, of the post that I've uh, published today. But I think prior to going to the post, um, one thing that fund managers always shared with me prior to the questions I asked with them was, you know, what, what, what let's, I'll answer your questions, Mia, but let's focus on like, what I did before I even went out to go to market, when, before I even went out to go start asking people for money. And so I think I'll start there and then I'll get the kind of snapshots of the post that I published today, if that works for you. Um, but you know, on the, on the, you know, your first time fund manager, you're going out to market. What do you do before you start fundraising? There's a whole checklist. Um, and I think it's important that we get transparent about it. And so, you know, to summarize that into like, I'd say four points, you know, the first and foremost is that I think it's really important to understand the concept of venture math and that it's very hard to, um, you know, generate these outside returns that are venture worthy and are what excite LPs and understand that to start a venture fund and have a successful one, it takes a lot of discipline and honestly, a little luck to be successful. And so while many of us know this, Barry, you included prior to starting Metagrow Ventures, I'm sure, you know, it's a common response when I ask emerging, emerging managers, what was your biggest doubt or biggest fear when you were starting a venture fund? They were like the math. It's very hard to be successful. I need to have a lot of at-bats. I need to hit home runs just to, just, just to generate a 1x on the fund, let alone a 3, 5, 7x, like I'm promising, prospective LP. So I think just laying out the foundation that of venture math and getting familiar with the concept is really important prior to going out to market because that's what you're pitching you're going to be able to do. And then the second fund is, you know, spending a lot of time crafting a differentiated story and building a financial model alongside that story. So, you know, first time fund managers need to spend a lot of time explaining to LPs what their investment strategy is, why it's unique, why they're the best individual to execute it. And then the financial model needs to go alongside that to outline how said strategy will actually drive outside returns for the LPs that they're pitching. So, for example, you know, your financial model should include how many investments will you invest out of your fund? What's your average check size? What are you reserving for follow on capital? How are you thinking about recycling capital versus distributing it upon realized investments and so forth? And so I think if you skip that step or any of these steps that I'm about to share, you'll be going, you'll be going out to market before you're tr truly ready and before you truly know yourself. And in the spirit of knowing yourself, it's also very important to know your prospective LP archetype, which leads me to my third point, which is you need to spend time building your ideal LP archetype, very similar to how founders of startups build their ICP, their ideal customer profile. What's your ideal LP profile? You know, LPs vary from high net worth individuals to family offices to fund of funds, institutional endowments, sovereign wealth funds, and so forth. You know, your fund one, are you going to go out and target the sovereign wealth funds of the world? Likely not, but kudos if you do. Um, and so I think it's important to understand who are you targeting and why. Uh, are you the fund manager that is going to be the bridge for high net worth individuals who are just starting to dip their toes into venture capital as an asset class? And are you ready to bring the level of education likely required to get those LPs comfortable to invest? Or are you the LP that's going to help an endowment 
just building out their foundation for a VC and be their first VC investment? Or are you going to go to a family office who is, you know, well known with VC, have a few investments and some co-investors that you've been, you know, looking at deal flows with, et cetera, and, you know, go that route. So I think it's really important to spend time knowing who you want to raise money from and why, and that'll result in a very narrow and targeted outreach that you can do. And then the fourth and final piece, um, and this kind of goes into right when you step your toes into the market, but before you go out to market and start pitching, start asking for money, you know, I think it's, I think it's a very tactical and strategic way um, that you can go about it. And instead of going out and asking for money right away, you can go out and ask to collaborate with prospective LPs. And so this is, you know, the style of approaching an initial conversation from a place of wanting to get feedback as opposed to wanting to ask for money. And, you know, arguably, it's still just as difficult as an ask. You're asking someone actually for the most precious asset, which is their time, let alone their money. And so you're asking for 30 minutes or an hour to sit down, talk through your investment strategy, see if it resonates with them, see if, you know, the language can, you can sh tweak the language at all to, you know, make the message come across clear, you know, get gut check on the materials that you've prepared, ask them if they know anyone else that you should talk to, to collaborate with, all with the intention that they feel like they're part of your journey, where if and when it makes sense, they might lean in and want to invest as well. Again, not with a direct ask because no one likes to be sold to, although you, at the end of the day, you're always selling, but you know, from a more collaborative standpoint, if that makes sense.